Jeff, Jeff, hey, man, listen, wow, dude, yo, 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 listen, hey, what, wow, you're like on course number oh, twelve, and we what? we got we got a show to do here, bro. Like, come on, what's? It's a jam session. Yeah, right. I know, but there's oh. five other horn players that need to play, and people are waiting on us. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to be the jazz police here, but. You took like seven too many choruses. No, no, no. It's cool. I mean, I, I had six other choruses, but all right. Uh, <laughs> what were you trying to well, Welcome the people in. Welcome <laughs> Welcome to J&J on Jazz. This is my friend Jeff who took too many choruses on a jam session. And this is my friend James who's uh, the jazz police. <laughs> perfect. We're off and running. <laughs> there it is. No, James, James had the perfect idea of what to talk about, and that's jam session etiquette. And when you talk to jazz musicians... Everybody has their story about, you know, the funkiness that went down at the jam session. Here's the story. No one's ever that person. It's only everybody knows. Oh, yeah, they somewhere are these players who don't have the etiquette. It may be you, sir, (laughs) ma'am. It may be you. So, yeah, let's let's talk about this kind of stuff. We've all been guilty of getting excited and, you know, overplaying, not listening, whatever it is. And so. Um, so I'd like to hear kind of what James is thinking about here. Before we do that, though, I want to let you know that uh, J&J on Jazz and, and myself, the Digging Deeper series, J&J on Jazz, uh, for four years, we've been doing videos every Friday for four years. What we're doing now is actually going to do just two a month. We're doing one every other week. On the off weeks, James and I are inside Jazzwire doing guided listening. So, James, you're doing the next guided listening, I think, inside Jazzwire. Which, uh, what tune are you thinking about doing? You know, I've been, I've got two that I'm thinking about. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do, what I'm going to land on, is there's a great Joe Henderson recording of the tune Four that he did live with Miles's rhythm section, uh, Jimmy Cobb, Paul Chambers, Winton Kelly. So. That's the one I'm leaning towards, but I reserve the right to change my mind at the 11th hour. Well, here's the thing. We're doing them every other week inside Jazzwire, so I want these YouTube folks to come into Jazzwire Mm -hmm. and really see what we got going on. So you can check out the free one-week trial and see what's going on. Come in listen to some of those guided listening episodes. 800 lessons on hundreds of songs. It's amazing. I want you to come in to jazz wire. All right, James, lay it down for me, man. Uh, seems like I was overplaying a little bit there at the beginning of the, uh, thing. when I, when I met a session and people play when horn players, especially play too many choruses, that is a big pet peeve of mine. Right. And yep. I, I, I really think it's important. And th- we've talked about this in other contexts too, uh, here in J and J on jazz and also inside jazz wire at Maryland summer and winter jazz. Can you say it in three choruses? Right. No, there's no better place than a jam session to say it in three choruses. I use the blues a lot. People probably get tired of it. If I play three choruses of a blues, can I say it in three choruses? That's what I want to hear. Right. And don't try to cram everything into those three choruses. Don't give me three choruses of sheets of sound. Say something pretty in three choruses. Mm -hmm. Give me a key, Jeff. Uh, I want to hear some uh, F blues. Yes, I can do that. then stop that's plenty get off the stage <laughs> you've said what you need yes to say. sir get off the stage that's- well and that's it man like right there i mean i hear your tone your articulation the ideas like you know i've heard what i need to hear i know you can play and now this makes me anxious to hear you again. I want to hear you again. I want to know what else you're going to play as opposed to you've just beat me down. And if I never see you again, that's actually cool. (laughs) Right. Um, don't outstay your welcome, man. What a great idea. Three choruses of blues, one chorus of a tune, maybe two, but being aware of your surroundings, right? Are there seven other horn players lined up? 
be a team player, right? Mm-hmm. Like, keep that in mind. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and you know, that, just, that, just that, one, that is it. one quick thing on that, Jeff, because there are going to be times when you're asked to sit in at a session or maybe some other situation. And then, yeah, if it's the sort of thing where it's like, like, Jeff, if you were to show up on in Pittsburgh, I would invite you to, to if you were to come out to one of my gigs, we would ask you to sit in and you'd be part of the band at that point. And then, yeah, take a couple of courses. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. You're part of the show at that point. But at, at a session when there's five mm-hmm. or six or seven other horn players in particular, that is not the time to to stretch out and like go for extra bases. So there is a time and a place for that when you're asked to sit in on somebody's band, but a session is not that place in my opinion. I'll get off my soapbox now. I'm done. I like it. No, kick that soapbox over here. I need a soapbox now. Yep, take it from so, me. So... Uh, <clears throat> Here we go. So uh, so now, lots of times at jam sessions, there's a lot of horn players, right? Let's agree we're going to play a tune. Okay, we're going to play a simple riff tune. We're going to play Lester Leaps In. We're going to play B-flat rhythm changes and this simple tune. One, two. That's the tune, right? Um... And so now we've got five or six horn players and some people know the tune, some people don't, but everybody's playing it totally differently. Everybody's playing it the way they know it. Everyone's playing it the way they want to play it. Everyone's playing as loud as they want to play relative to whatever's going on. No, 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 no. We've got five or six horn players on stage. This is the band. This isn't a collection of lunatics. (laughs) This is a band, right? Like... (laughs) <laughs> the, the, right we're not <laughs> come on yeah like this is a band we're we got <laughs> lights on us and we're facing an audience that's how you know yeah. it's a band so let's think like a band right and so now if there's a trumpet player up there i'm going to defer you know that that's one of those etiquette things is often if there's a trumpet player they they may be the lead voice. And so now I may know, I heard that person play on the previous tune. Maybe they're not confident. Maybe they're a novice. Okay, maybe I can read the room and I might be that guy. I'm willing to be that guy. I'm willing to not be that guy. But either way, I'm listening to the first three notes. Boo-doo, bop. Is it ha, 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 right? Like how are we articulating those notes? This is a band. We have six horns. We're the horn section. We're the singers. How are we going to sing these? We don't just press buttons and make notes, right? How are we going to play it? So there's so many ways we could do it. All those were different. Long, long, long. Long, long, short. Long, short, short. Short, short, short. What's the articulation going to be? Are we moving to that last note? ba do bop bop How long is that last note? In the previous episode we did, we were talking about Harry Sweets Edison and those bouncing quarter notes. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to what we're coming with together on stage. Is it this? I'm playing a little fall. Are we doing a fall? If I hear someone playing a fall, not only do I play a fall, but I'm listening to how far they fall, right? Like really paying attention to that stuff. That makes the difference between this sounding like a group effort in a band and just a, you know, a free for all. So for me, articulation and those bends, you know, sometimes, you know, stylistic little moments, those are things to listen for and try to come together as opposed to it being some arms race of people trying to play yeah. louder than the next guy and have their voice be heard over top of the choir. Like, um, you know, that's why jam sessions, you know, kind of end up being not fun sometimes because it's really this ego kind of thing as opposed to what jazz is all about, which is democracy where there's a lot of voices, but we come together and make a statement as opposed to, you know, a bunch of individuals yelling their own thing. Mm -hmm. So to me, uh, when I get up on stage, I'm really trying to figure out the the vibe of 
the melody we're playing right now. And if I hear somebody is interpreting the melody in their own way, I'm going to get out of the way. I can't read their mind. They're not playing in a way where I can play with them. So what I'm going to do is stop playing on the melody. Amen. And when the bridge comes up, I'm when the bridge comes up, I'm going to walk two steps in front of them. Not I I hope it's not a weird aggressive thing, but I'm going to walk into their peripheral line of sight and take a big breath and I'm going to start playing the bridge. You just had two A sections, I got the bridge. Yeah. And that should be cool. Now this is orchestration. It's sounding like a band. And now if they kind of keep playing, sometimes, you know, they don't have the etiquette or there's some ego going on there or whatever. And they keep playing and okay, now it's messy because there's two people trying to interpret the same thing again. But um, I'm always willing to sort of defer or I'm willing to lead if that makes sense, but I'm always very willing to step back when it makes sense for the band. And when it's time for my solo, now I will take my solo. I'm good, that's my moment. I don't have to have my moment all the time. Yeah. So I think, um, I think that's important. And you know, the, the other downside though is, is if everybody is following, now we're chasing each other's tails and no one's going anywhere, right? So it's, it's, it's tricky, right? It's reading a room and who's, you know, who's speaking now, who has the stage and how does that work? So it's, it's really a lot of interpersonal stuff and it's complicated and it's messy and there's a lot of ways to do it. But being hip to this etiquette, I think is very important. So uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. That's great. And to me, articulation is a, is a great, very tangible thing to focus on. So how do you do it? You may not have a jam session to go to in the next three months, okay? Put an album on right now. Yes. Uh, put on, you know, a simple tune you know. Listen to Lester Young playing Lester Leaps In. And can you copy him? Listen to eight measures and now join him on the second A section. Can you copy him from what you just heard? It's a really good way to go, right? Because on a jam session, you don't get to listen 10 times. You know, you don't get to go back and rehearse it. So you listen and then see if you can join him. So play along with albums. It's a great idea. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. And I, I love that you came at this from the standpoint of the melody, right? And 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 having a, having the the wherewithal to try to fit into a band on a jam session. Like, thank you for that. And when you're listening to these melodies, learn a couple different versions of people's melodies for these standards. But but pick people that are playing them in ways that are very clear. Um, Lester Young is a great example of that. Sonny Stitt, the way he plays melodies for standards is very clear. Dexter Gordon is another one. Like if, you, if you're going to learn anybody's version of a melody, it's cool to learn Dexter's. Miles for trumpet players. A lot of the standards mm -hmm. we play, the way that people play standards, a lot of times, like think of, of Autumn Leaves, you know. I, you're just, I'm just channeling Miles at that point. I mean, I ran off camera and got a harm yep. on you so I could do that, right? But I bet if I asked you, if you and I played Autumn Leaves together, we would quickly come to some sort of a paraphrase based in like that version of the melody, and we'd be able to sound like we've been playing it together for a long time. Because we've listened to the same recordings, we've done the homework, and we're listening to each other in the moment, trying to find each other. It's amazing you can do that, right? Yeah, it's really true. And that shared history is a big part of it, right? So if you're at the point of going out to jam sessions and connecting and playing music with other human beings, uh, that shared history, your listening is one of the big tools that you take to that jam session, not just the the new lick you learned and the fast fingers and everything. So Thank you. yeah, that's great. So this is this is wonderful. This is a you know a deeper way to uh, to do that. So man, James, thank you very much. And uh, again, I want people to come in and check out the guided listening stuff. You and I have done a couple of these videos inside Jazzwire and people are really, really digging them. And this is where I, I got so much traction as a younger player hanging out with my friends and doing that exact thing, having my friends tell me, man, check out what Philly Joe's doing here. I, I was hearing things I didn't know existed on albums I'd heard a hundred times, Amen. right? Yeah. So having a guide right? Having a guide is so much fun. So uh, I'm excited to hear what you do with uh, with uh, the uh, Joe Henderson uh, album that I know really well, but I, I can't wait to hear what you're going to talk about inside Jazzwire. So you folks sign up for the free trial and then join us inside Jazzwire. There's no better way to get better. So uh, we hope we'll see you there. See you inside Thank Jazzwire, y'all. So Take care.